I've been repeating that a color picker is the most dangerous tool in any image maker's toolbox. A picker happy designer is not only capable of destroying their reputation, but they could cause a significant monetary loss for their client as well. All because of this single, untamed, unregulated, uncontrolled tool that we all rush to use. I don't blame us. Not that we are lazy, right? We're just trying to be efficient, right? Here I have a PDF brand book with a certain well-known brand color and an RGB value listed below. I could type in the number, but instead I can just color pick on the blue area to get the same results because both files are in sRGB, so that means it's safe to color pick to really make sure that it's the right values because everything works. Welcome to part two of the Nightmare series. Before we start wielding the dangerous weapon that is the color picker, how about we go through some theory first? A refresher for your dexterity. Does a color picker really pick color? Remember, color is a feeling, a sensation. It is constructed in your brain, so it only really exists in the meat space. In simpler terms, light enters the eye, the eye sends the information to the brain, the brain interprets the signal and approximates a sensation of a color. A color in its truest sense. So what does a color picker pick? The color picker inspects pixel values, usually comprised from three values of R, G and B. And why is this important? You've probably heard this phrase a million times in your life. Your eyes deceive you. In fact, the brain does all sorts of things to make sense of the incoming information, including filling in the gaps or approximating. The weird kid was right. There is no spoon. All that approximation opens doors to all sorts of visual illusions. There are incredibly extreme examples of these illusions on Professor Kitaoka's webpage. Illusions like the apparent red train. I like trains, and as a professional train liker, I can tell you that the color of this train is red, because that's the sensation created in my brain. Even though the pixel values say that inspected patch is achromatic or neutral, as shown by the values in the color picker. So our perception of color is incredibly context dependent. Remember this red train next time someone asks you to grab a color from a photo or just use that red of that train in the picture. We've established that a color picker is really a value picker and I will try to maintain this terminology throughout the video. Here's how I make it make sense to myself. There are two types of value pickers. One is a global and one is local. Local value pickers, like the one you can find in Adobe Photoshop or Affinity Photo, works by measuring values based on its working space. If your file is in sRGB, it will assume everything on the screen is in sRGB. If your working space is Adobe RGB, it will assume, you guessed it, that everything on your screen is Adobe RGB. Which is good, you end up with perceptually identical color. Global value pickers, like the one provided by Microsoft Power Toys, are tied to a screen's color profile. It will ignore any other color management and will just output values based on the output of your operating system. The value picker is a tool that can be used in a few different ways. One is to inspect the pixel or an area and get the numeric values of the R, G and B. But there's a different, a cursed and a naughty way of using a value picker. It's using the tool to simply immediately copy and paste pixel values. Or, colloquially, grab or pick a color. You have to be incredibly, exceptionally careful doing that. Because being picker happy, as I call it, is putting your full trust in a system that simply does not work. Use the value picker as a copy-paste instrument only if you're absolutely sure what you're doing. Basically, it's almost everything to do with how color management works, or, more precisely, doesn't work. I've talked about this in more detail in the part 1 of the Nightmare series. If you're lucky enough to have an sRGB screen with an sRGB profile in Windows, it's a tiny bit less dangerous. For everyone else, hoo 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 boy. 
Here are a few practical examples. We'll open Affinity Photo and make a file in sRGB color space. That's still the standard and I wish to share this file on the internet or with my customer. Also have this totally official brand book that is properly tagged with an sRGB color profile. I'll open it with the popular Adobe Acrobat reader. Now if I do the naughty thing and just grab the values of this blue, I will of course end up with a totally different color and totally different pixel values. These don't match. Currently, Adobe Acrobat Reader is bugged and nobody cares. Well, a few people do, the ones that are in trouble. But you wouldn't know this if you didn't check the actual pixel values. Okay, it's noticeable here in this example, but often you have small elements that you need to apply client-provided values to. And those are really easy to get wrong. Trust me, I know. Okay, we now know that this PDF viewer is broken. Let's open it in something that works well with sRGB, like Google Chrome. But instead of using the local color picker, let's use the one that's provided by Microsoft Power Toys. Let's grab this, get the hex code, of course. Let's be as lazy as possible. And just paste that in. Guess what? Wrong color again. And there are so many more ways that this information transfer from point A to point B can go sideways. Therefore, you need to be extra careful when you're inspecting values and reusing values. Check the color space of the input document. Make sure it's displayed correctly. Make sure the input values you are copying are in the correct color space. Convert those values if you're moving between color spaces if necessary. When we'll have a fully color managed OS, we can then think about improving the value picker. But for now, computers are still dumb, and you and me have to do all the thinking when it comes to color. macOS has a global value picker called Digital Color Meter that comes pre-installed with every Mac. It gives you the opportunity to convert the values of the picked area to the values of a different color space. Nice, but still so far away from actually user-friendly value picker that just works. Now, how would something that actually works look like? This is so very difficult to imagine, as the value picker would need to be aware of all the different color profiles in all the different applications. And not just pick the values straight off the OS, but to actually have access to meta information. Here's how I envision it, at least for 2D software. So my fever dream value picker could provide information about the input values you have inputted manually all the values before any color management is done. And the output, values after applying your displaced profile. Sort of like how the current global value pickers work. So if you're using an Adobe RGB display, value picking a REC 2020 file, you would be made aware of the clipping and the actual input values. But again, this is daydream territory. I honestly think this is almost impossible given how current color management works. And with this sad news, it's time to end this fiesta of ranting. Join me on the part 3 of the Nightmare series, where I will try to convince you to never use the hex color codes ever again. Thanks for watching.